Yesterday we started looking at the two port network which is driven by a signal source on one side and loaded on the other side and what we are looking for is the expression for the gain and of course the conditions on the parameters which will maximize this gain okay because first now we take it for granted that we want gain okay we have amplifiers all around us that's what we want to realize so we want gain and we would like to have as much gain from a given device as possible okay so this is the system we analyzed and this two port is described by its y parameters it's a linear two port network of course it's understood that it's the incremental linear equivalent of the nonlinear two port at the operating point because we know that we need nonlinearity to have gain okay so i hope you all uh, derive this expression for v not by vi by yourself because you need to be able to do this type of calculations routinely so what's the expression what do you get what do you get ah uh, ah uh. no that's v not by vi just tell me the remaining part ah uh, you can sit down divided by minus y12 y21 okay now intuitively also this makes sense the circuit representation of uh, y parameter 2 port consists of two conductances corresponding to y11 and y22 and two control sources okay and this is being driven by vi and rs which can also be represented with a current source vi times gs or vi divided by rs and the conductance of gs on this side we'll have gl because the load resistance rl appears across y22 you expect y22 plus gl in the expression and because gs appears across y11 you also expect y11 plus gs in the expression okay and it also makes sense that y21 is in the numerator because y21 is the transfer parameter from port 1 to port 2 okay a large value of y21 means that for a given voltage here you get a lot of current so it is the gain is proportional to y21 okay now the question is what is the, what are the desirable values of these y parameters and the condition is that we want to maximize the gain now uh, let me write off say that rl and rs we can we take them to be positive of course we are looking at a real load and a real source okay and then uh, it it doesn't have to be the case for a nonlinear device but we'll take y11 and y22 also to be positive okay that means that what is y11 what is y11 of a two port it's the short circuit input admittance right you short circuit port 2 you look into port 1 the resistance that you see or the conductance that you see is y11 okay and we take that to be positive it basically says that this two port network will have a positive resistance it doesn't have a negative resistance okay when you look into it right and the same for y22 okay so now obviously what is it that you would want y1 and y y11 and y22 to be what's a good value of y11 to have what is that zero yeah i mean it appears in the denominator and it is <coughs> adding to gs so y11 equals 0 seems to be a good value and similarly what about y22 
also 0 ok what about y 2 1 or y 1 2 what about y 1 2 y 1 2 it is hard to say ok it is uh, first of all if y 1 2 is negative uh, it will add to the numerator if uh, the product y 1 2 y 2 1 is for negative, but in general this y 1 2 is somewhat risky okay. meaning y 1 2 is the reverse transfer from the output side to the input side. Okay. Now, it is entirely possible to have it as some value and have a nice circuit and so on, but it is always possible that with some combination of uh, g s and g l if this y 1 2 is present this y 1 2 y 2 1 will cancel off that part and the denominator becomes 0. Okay. What does it mean for the denominator to become 0? Infinite gain. So, what does it mean? Is it something we want? We want it large, but is it infinity? <laughs> Do we want infinity? Huh? Which case? Op amps. Okay. What does infinity mean? Instability. Okay. This is what it means. Right. So here definitely y12 is not zero because there is something going from the mic to the uh, sorry speaker back to the mic. Okay. That is something that we can't prevent. That's why I shouldn't be standing there talking. Right. If I do that, then I have to reduce the gain even further. So it just turns out that for some values of uh, y21 it is possible for it to become unstable okay so that is the, if you have internal feedback it can become unstable but like i said this is not a hard and fast condition because later of course we will go and design circuits which have feedback and we will find the conditions uh, under which they are stable and so on okay now another reason for uh, a stage not to have feedback within itself is this in general it is desirable to have stages which are unilateral that is which uh, transmit signal only in one direction. So, what happens is the following. So, let us say you have a number of blocks you are familiar with what is meant by unilateral what is unilateral huh? it is one sided basically y 1 2 is 0 or y 2 1 is 0 and similarly in uh, if you take any of the other uh, two port parameter sets one of the parameters 2 1 or 1 2 will be 0 and this is exactly the kind of thing you use when you analyze systems in courses like network and systems and so on. Okay. So, when you say that you have v 1 here and here you get h 1 v 1 where h 1 is the transfer function and it is implicit that this is unilateral. Okay. This side is the input, that side is the output. You do not expect to feed an input here and get an output there right? and in control systems also you must be already doing this. You have a block and you have a gain and this side is the input, that side is the output. So, that means that it is already assumed that it is unilateral. It also means that you connect something else to, so let us say you take H 2 here you connect h 3 to it right. Now, if it is not unilateral what can happen is there is some reverse transmission in h 2 and connecting h 3 actually can change the behavior of h 1. Okay. I mean it can propagate back also down the chain. So, that is again not desirable because it becomes quite hard to if everything is affecting everything else it becomes quite hard to design things. Okay. So, even if you want to place feedback you want to place controlled amounts of it in a unilateral fashion as much as possible. Okay. So, that is why for now we will say that uh, y 1 2 should be 0. Okay. So, these the conditions are obvious and y 1 2 0 to avoid feedback. Okay. This is fine. Yeah. No, no. Y11 and Y22 should be zero simply because they add to the denominator, right?
No, that is what we do not want that I mean because the, for some combinations the denominator could also become 0 right. You do not know the values of G S and G L that you use. Okay. So, it is possible that the uh, y 1 2 is 0 just to avoid any feedback within the device. Okay. That is something that I assume it is not that you cannot design circuits which have feedback within the device, but it just becomes more cumbersome to do that. Okay. Because now if you have a chain of stages the third stage will affect the first one I mean you expect that it will affect the second one because it is connected to it, but it will also affect what comes before. Okay. So, that is something that you would not want to have. So, that is why I would want y 1 2 to be 0 y 1 1 and y 2 2 are 0 simply because they are extra loading right and it is kind of obvious here you have this current source it is getting shared between this g s and y 1 1. Okay. Why should you share it you do not have this at all similarly this output current y 2 1 v 1 is what is driving the output that current is getting divided between the load and y 2 2. Okay. Why, why should we divide it let it all go into the load that is what it means by having y 2 2 equal 0. Okay. So, all of the current produced by the control source y 1 2 v 1 sorry y 2 1 v 1 should go into the load that is what is the meaning of y 2 2 equal to 0. Okay. This is fine and similarly y 1 1 equal 0 means that the input should not be drawing any current. Okay. So, the input of this 2 port it would not be drawing any current because first of all we said y 1 2 is 0. So, that part is gone and if y 1 is also 0 no current is flowing in that seems like a good thing right because you have a voltage source you do not want to load it you, if you draw current you have a voltage source with an internal resistance a series resistance if you draw current what happens that voltage is only going to drop. Okay. So, you do not want that so that is why you would want y 1 1 to be 0 that comes out of the expression but that is the meaning of it this is okay? fine and what you what would you want y 2 1 to be some large number some as large as possible. Okay. So, uh, ideally you would like to have an amplifier device if it is described in uh, y parameters these are the desirable characteristics and you can also do the analysis with other parameter sets let us say h or z or g or something okay. and you will come up with similar uh, conditions to make feedback equal to 0 the parameter 1 2 will be 0 okay. and you will see that uh, similarly, z 1 1 and z 2 2 will add to the denominator etcetera etcetera. Okay. Now, of course, the conditions that you get there and here will mean different things for the total characteristics. Now, it turns out that the real devices that we have actually correspond to the y parameter description that is why I started with this. Okay. But let us say I mean you could think of uh, inventing a new device which corresponds to the desirable z parameter characteristics I mean it may happen in the future who knows right. Okay. So, is this part clear what we have done is to evaluate the gain of a 2 port which is driven by a source and which is driven by a source loaded on the other side and we want to maximize the gain okay. and the conditions are that y 1 1 should be 0 uh, y 2 2 should be 0, y 1 2 also should be 0 and y 2 1 should be as large as possible. Okay. Now, of course, what are these y parameters? These are incremental uh, parameters of the nonlinear device. So, that means that at some operating point these things must be true. Okay. It is at the operating point and obviously, for it to behave like a good amplifier you have to bias it at that operating point, you have to choose that operating point. Okay. So, yesterday we chose v 1 0, v 2 0 etcetera we have to choose them. So, that I mean if you have a nonlinear device it could have it does not need to have this everywhere in fact, it probably cannot have it everywhere. Okay. So, it would not be able to have that everywhere that becomes a linear device right. So, it will have it in some region of the characteristics and you should bias your uh, amplifier device in that region is this okay? any questions. So, after all this is left what after all these conditions are satisfied what is the gain of the amplifier what is the gain v naught by v i minus y 2 1 by g l I mean that is again pretty obvious because what is it that we have in the circuit v i r s both y 1 1 and y 1 2 are 0. So, that means that between 1 1 prime we have 
an open circuit ok and this is V 1 and on the other side we just have a current source Y 2 1 V 1 loaded by R L ok. What is the value of V 1? What is the value of V 1 in this picture? V i because no current is going through R s it is equal to the input voltage V i. So, this current source in the downward direction is Y 2 1 V i and this voltage is minus Y 2 1 V i times R L that is all or minus V i times Y 2 1 by G L. So, that is the gain ok. So, essentially what we want is just a voltage controlled current source uh, the nonlinear two port device should behave like a pure voltage controlled current source at some part of its operating point ok. Any questions on any of this? No, we do not know what the. So, these parameters y 1 1 y uh, all the y parameters will vary depending on the operating point ok. So, we want these y parameters. Now, these conditions may not be true at every part of the operating point ok. In fact, it would not be if the y parameters are exactly the same everywhere that means, it is a linear device right. So, it will be true only in some part of the operating point and we have to use our uh, uh, amplifier there that is all ok. It will probably become clearer after we discuss the transistor because you will clearly see that it would not be I mean these conditions would not be true everywhere ok. All I am saying is that these y parameters depend on the operating point ok. Anything else? No, negative sign uh, this is the polarity of the current source that is all that is why you have the negative sign. Uh, for now, let us ignore that I mean we want to amplify it whether it is inverted or not we would not worry about it ok. So, he is asking if there is any significance to this negative sign for now let us not worry about it if you put in a sine wave whether you have plus or minus you will get a sine wave. If that multiplying factor is large you will get a large sine wave that is what we want. So, the fact that it has a minus sign we can ignore it for now ok. And there are ways of arranging the uh, same device to get a sign I mean get a positive sign as well ok. How do I get? This circuit, this circuit is exactly the same as the y parameter circuit with these conditions applied y 1 1 equals 0 means this goes away y 1 2 equals 0 means that goes away y 2 2 equals 0 means that goes away. So, it is the same circuit ok. Anything else? Ok. So, these are the uh, desirable characteristics. just say to avoid current sharing I mean you know what it means this is what I described earlier you want all of the current from the control source to go into the load and all of the input I mean no current to be drawn from the input ok. And then uh, finally, y 2 1 as large as possible. Again, y 2 1 is a quantity with dimensions, it has dimensions of conductance ok. So, when I say as large as possible, it obviously depends on the load that you connect because the gain is y 1 2 by g l. So, if you have a very small load resistance, then you should have a y 2 1 that is also very large in an absolute sense ok. 
So, when you say it is as large as possible, it should be compared to the load conductance. Okay. Now, it turns out that there actually is a device which conforms more or less to this okay, and it is known as the MOS transistor. Again, I think you are doing solid state devices now or did you do it last semester? You are doing it now. So, you will see this also at the end of that course. Okay. It is actually a four terminal device, but uh, for our purposes we can consider it to be a three terminal device. Okay. So, that it conforms exactly the, to the two port picture I put down earlier. This is the symbol for the MOS transistor and these are the two ports with a common terminal. Okay. So, it is a three terminal two port. Of course, we are talking about a specific device. So, we would not use the generic terminology of two ports anymore. Now, this terminal this is called the drain and this is called the source the common terminal and the input terminal or port 1 is called the gate. Okay. And these uh, terminologies, these are basically related to the operation of the device, okay, where electrons are sourced from, drained from, and so on. So, also as far as the voltages and currents are concerned, we won't call them V1, V2, I1, I2 anymore. We have the terminals, and similarly, this voltage here, the port one voltage, it's called VGS. gate source voltage and the current I 1 this is the gate current. Similarly, the voltage on port 2 it is between the drain terminal and the source terminal it is called the drain source voltage V d s. and this current here, this is the drain current I d. Okay. So, essentially we have a three terminal two port and all I did was now to define the uh, currents and voltages. Okay. Now, earlier yesterday we had written this I 1 is F 1 of V 1 V 2 and I 2 is F 2 of V 1 V 2. So, these currents will be functions of V d s and V g s the gate source voltage and the drain source voltage. Okay. Now, very luckily for us it turns out that at least for d c this I g is exactly 0. Okay. Now, it turns out that the gate of a MOS transistor looks like a capacitor. Okay. Very crudely the way the MOS transistor works is very simple. There is a capacitor, one of the plates is metal, the other is a block of uh, semiconductor okay. and you apply some voltage across it. What happens if you apply voltage across a capacitor? There will be charges on the plates. Okay. So, now in a normal capacitor you will have two metal plates and the metal plates will be conductive anyway. So, whether you have uh, extra charge because of the applied voltage it does not matter. What happens when one of the plates is semiconductor is that normally when you do not apply any voltage the conductivity of this bottom part is quite poor. Okay. Now, when you apply a voltage, there will be charges induced on the plates. 
okay so there will be i mean if with this polarity there will be positive charges here and negative charges over there those excess negative charges in the semiconductor substantially enhance the semi enhance the conductivity okay so now if you connect let's say you were to measure the resistance between these two terminals a and b it would be actually very very high if you didn't apply any voltage but if you apply some voltage beyond a certain value because of the charges induced it goes from being almost like an insulator to almost like a conductor i mean that's the virtue of semiconductor right you can modulate its conductivity an insulator like plastic it will never conduct and similarly metal it will never insulate it will always conduct whereas the semiconductor can go both ways okay so that's the, the extremely crude description of the operation of a mos transistor okay so by the way the mos stands for uh, metal oxide semiconductor because we have the metal here and this insulating part in between is the oxide of course mos transistor now has evolved for more than 50 years and uh, what is on top is not exactly metal and what's in the middle is not exactly an oxide but we still call it a mos transistor okay so that's how it works and by the way yeah what i wanted to say was this gate here is this that's the controlling terminal and you can see i mean no current will flow into it at least no dc will flow into it right just like a capacitor so that's why the gate current is zero which is great for us what does it mean for the parameters and for which parameters y11 and y12 are zero because the total current itself is zero obviously its derivative at any operating point is always zero okay so this means that two of the things that we wished for are indeed true okay now initially everything that we do will be with very low frequency or nearly dc stuff okay or low frequencies it's neither dc nor very high frequencies so this condition is a reasonable thing to assume okay this uh, ig being zero now is it okay the drain current of course it follows different behavior in uh, different regimes of voltage now this uh, three terminal model of the mos transistor or three terminal mos transistor it has some limitations first of all we have to use it with positive values of both vds and vgs otherwise the equations that i'm going to write are not valid but that's okay that's not a significant limitation in as far as the usage is concerned okay so we can do this now it turns out that this id is zero if vgs happens to be less than a certain voltage vt vt is a parameter of the mos transistor and it's called appropriately the threshold voltage so if the gate source voltage that is the voltage on port 1 is below the threshold voltage the transistor is off okay again going back to the crude description this uh, metal oxide semiconductor capacitor is not exactly like a metal metal capacitor metal metal capacitor you apply a small voltage there will be a certain charge and if you apply a larger voltage there will be something proportional to it now because of the properties of this uh, semiconductor and so on and metal semiconductor junctions okay so this capacitor doesn't work that way for uh, small values of voltage nothing happens there will be actually a very very little charge it's not useful enough for conduction once the voltage becomes greater than some value which is known as the threshold voltage the charge build up is substantial okay so that's why it's called the threshold voltage and later in uh, the device course you will see how to compute the threshold voltage from the uh, parameters of the semiconductor and the metal and so on okay but uh, one thing is it's great that actually we can do everything with models right we don't need to learn every part of semiconductor physics to be able to use it okay if we have right models we can design any circuit without actually having to look inside the device it is useful to look inside the device but it's not necessary for circuit design and this is just like we do many other things right for instance you use an inductor and you use the relationship v equals l di by dt 
but actually you can do this without knowing lenz's law and which way the fields are and so on as long as you use this equation and apply kirchhoff's current law and voltage law properly you would be able to solve for any circuit so similarly everything that we do is model based okay and i mean it's this division i mean the hierarchical division that enables you to do uh, enables you to make very complicated things okay so and at a higher level you don't have to worry about what's inside a circuit you only have to worry about the input output characteristics at an even higher level it's at system level and even higher level it is software and so on okay so it's a hierarchical build up that lets you do very lets you make very complicated things but what is very important in this is to have good models okay if you use the wrong model nothing will work okay so we just need to know the model we don't need to know the details of the operation although you will learn it in another course so id equal 0 below the threshold voltage so you can think of this vgs as what is controlling the device and it has to be above a certain value for the device to become on and provide any current at all okay and id it turns out is these are some parameters which i'll define soon so yet another equation for the current and this is true when vgs is greater than vt and vds is less than vgs minus vt okay some region of the characteristics so this part is true regardless of the value of vds if vgs is less than vt nothing will happen because i mean i told you there is no charge build up nothing will happen okay and finally there is the third region okay and this is true if vgs is greater than vt i mean i won't keep repeating this obviously there will be non zero current only if vgs is more than the threshold voltage and vds is more than vgs minus vt okay so essentially we have a model i mean with uh, three parts the way i have defined it one is of course if uh, the gate source voltage is less than the threshold voltage there is no current now once the gate source voltage exceeds the threshold voltage there are two further regions one for small values of drain source voltage that's the first one and the other one is for large values of drain source voltage okay now how would you graphically depict a two port current voltage characteristics what will you do i mean iv characteristics have a diode you know you just plot i versus v if you have a two port what do you have to do how many plots will you have four there will be four plots okay there are two currents and two voltages of course in our case we don't need the first two because i1 is zero so we don't need that at all i1 versus v1 and i1 versus v2 but we do need this part i2 or id versus vgs the gate source voltage and id versus vds the drain source voltage okay so this vt is the threshold voltage mu n it turns out is the mobility of electrons in the semiconductor okay i think you are familiar with concept of mobility right from physics and so on so this is the mobility in semiconductor which is different from in a metal and c ox is some oxide capacitance per unit area again going back to the picture of the device there is a capacitor here okay the spacing between the plates is fixed but the area of the plates can be anything so if you take a unit area that is 1 meter square you will have some capacitance that is that capacitance okay now again as far as we are concerned we don't need to separate out mu n and c ox and so on this whole thing will be given as a constant okay so let's take some values 
just for convenience of uh, numbers, I will use this, although these kind of belong to an old uh, technology, okay. So, most transistor technology also has been evolving. I mean, you may have heard terms like 22 nanometers and 40 nanometers and what not, okay. So, the transistors become smaller and smaller and there are some benefits to that, later we will see what they are. So, the numbers that I am going to show belong to some somewhat ancient technology, but it just gives you easy hand calculations. What are the units of mu and C ox? Oh, by the way, I did not describe what W and L are. W is the width of the MOS transistor, L is the length. So, W by L is dimensionless. So, what are the dimensions of mu and C ox? It must be ampere per volt square because you are multiplying it with square of the voltage and getting a current, okay. So, value of mu and C ox, I will take it to be 100 microampere per volt square, okay. And the threshold voltage to be 1 volt, okay. So, but if you look at the technologies that we have been using uh, for our designs recently, the threshold voltage is probably closer to half a volt and this mu and C ox will be substantially higher also, okay. So, you will get used to this as you start solving problems with this one. So, this W and L what it means is the following. This is the drain, this is the source and if you look at the top view of the semiconductor, it looks like this. This is the gate, this part of it and on this side and this side you will have the drain and the source, okay. So, it will have some width and there is a certain separation between the drain and source, okay. So, this is the top view and current flows from drain to source like this. You can consider it to be more or less uniform spread across this, okay. So, the separation between the drain and source is called the length of the MOS transistor and the width across which the current flows, basically the horizontal dimension of the drain or source that is called the width W of the MOS transistor, okay. Now, you can see why it is proportional to W, right. If you go on making it bigger and bigger, more current will flow, that is all, okay. And you can also vaguely see the motivation for making L smaller and smaller and smaller. As the drain gets closer to the source, the amount of time it takes for current to go from uh, drain to source will become smaller. So, that is why to make circuits faster and faster and faster, you have to make the length smaller and smaller and smaller. That is what has been happening. That is why processors or every, every circuit that you have keep getting faster and faster. Essentially, you make the dimension small so that it takes less time to do anything, okay. And of course, having the dimension of each transistor small also helps you packing in lot more transistors in a given area. So, now you have transistors, I mean you have integrated circuits with a billion transistors on it, okay, that is possible. So, what I want you to do now is first let us take the last region or rather both regions. Uh, let me rewrite that. Both of these are true for uh, VGS greater than VT and the first one is for VDS less than VGS minus VT, the second one is for VDS greater than VGS minus VT. So, and I already gave you the values of the parameters, mu and C ox is 100 microampere per volt square and 
V T is 1 volt and let us take W by L to be 1. So, what I want you to do is sketch I D versus V D S. By the way, yeah, we have two variables. So, when we sketch I D versus V D S, we keep the other one constant. Okay. So, do it for V G S equals 3 volts and please make a neat sketch and that should resemble the actual curve and so on. Okay, the function. You understand the problem? I have already given the equations, I have given you the constants. So, just plot it properly for V G S equals 3 volts. Okay. Now, of course, you have to be mindful of when you have to apply this equation and when that one. Okay. So, many of you have got it, although some of you have uh, carelessly drawn the first part of the characteristics. In fact, the easier part to draw is the second one because it is actually independent of V D S. You just have to compute how much it is. How much is that? 200 micro amperes and what values of V D S is it valid for? Greater than 2 volts. Okay. So, for uh, V D S greater than 2 volts, it will be 200 micro amperes. Okay. Now, the earlier part of the curve, what does that look like? This one, it is an inverted parabola because the square term is negative okay. and in fact, if you plot it, it turns out that it will look like that and the top of the parabola is exactly here. Okay. After that, it starts falling. Of course, after that, it is not valid anymore. So, it goes up like this the point I am trying to make is that the curve is continuous and also the slope is continuous. The slope of that parabola becomes 0 at that point and after that the slope remains at 0. Okay. So, some of you have written this which uh, I mean just by looking at just by saying it is a parabola obviously not correct. Okay. And this is for V G S equals 3 volts. Okay. Now, as you can see the slope is, uh, what is the slope of this? Which of the y parameters is that? The slope of this curve. Which y parameter is this? Y? Y 2 2. Okay. So, this is y 2 2 and you can clearly see it is not constant everywhere. So, given the constraints we derived earlier, where is, where do you want to operate your amplifier? Which part? right side or left side? Right side clearly Okay, because this is where you get y 2 2 equal to 0. So, this is what I was saying earlier that it depends on the operating point. So, if you do operate here, you will get a y 2 2 that is larger than 0. Okay, So, that means that your gain will be smaller. Okay. Now, we can also complete the plot by uh, first of all for any V g s less than or equal to 1 volt, the current will be 0. Okay. For uh, V G S equals 2 volts, what is the current? What is the constant part of the current? Huh? 50 micro amperes. Okay. And it will be constant for V D S more than 1 volt. Okay. And for uh, V G S equals 4 volts, what is the constant part of the current? 450 micro amperes, yeah. And it's constant for what values of VDS? Above 3 volts. Okay. So that's what it looks like. Okay. So these are what the characteristics look like. Uh, it has an initial parabolic part whose slope gradually decreases and it falls to 0 and after that at least according to this model it remains a constant. Okay. So, the current remains constant. So, that means that y 2 2 will be 0 beyond this V g s minus V t, but that limit is not some fixed voltage that also depends on V g s. Okay. And 
turns out that this region here where the current is constant it is called the saturation region that is where the current saturates and this region is called the linear region or the triode region for some various reasons we will see later. Okay. So, if you want to use the MOS transistor as an amplifier you have to operate it in which region saturation region. So, that is part of the game picking the correct operating point. So, that you are in saturation region. Okay. So, we will uh, stop here for now by tomorrow's class please sketch I D versus V G S in saturation region that is ok, because in triode region you will have some weird dependence on V D S and so on. So, just sketch I D versus V G S in saturation region. Okay. So, what we did was first to find the constraints on uh, y parameters which give you a high gain we have some values. So, this will kind of tell you what to look for in any device or if you are given some device if some device is thrown at you how to choose the operating point for uh, having a high gain. And then we examine this device which happens to be av available and which more or less satisfies all the conditions that we want to have in a good amplifier. Okay. That is called the MOS transistor extremely widely used the dominant technology today. There are other types of transistors and even other types of amplifying devices which came before, but right now the dominant one is this MOS which is based on silicon as semiconductor. Okay.